Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me for today's uh, devotion. We're beginning uh, a new book for our devotions. We are in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, in your New Testament this morning. I'm looking forward to the next several days as we make our way through this book. It's one of my favorites in the New Testament. It's also one of the most easily misunderstood books, but I think it's got some beautiful lessons to teach us, to help us grow closer to Christ. Now, the the background, if you will, to help you understand Hebrews when you read it is this. Um, this letter is written to believers, disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, who came out of a Jewish background. So they were Jews who became followers of Jesus. And as time passed, uh, due to persecution and other issues, some of them were becoming discouraged and beginning to turn back to Judaism. So they were abandoning Jesus and turning to Judaism. And the author, and so, we don't know who wrote Hebrews. Some people think it was Paul. The truth is no one knows. I don't think it was Paul. It may have been Apollos. Nobody knows for certain, only God. But anyway, doesn't really matter. Anyway, um, it's written to encourage these who had made professions of faith in Jesus. So these people of Jewish background had made professions of faith in Jesus, and they were discouraged and tempted to turn back to Judaism. And this letter is to encourage them not to do that, to stay true to Jesus, keep the faith, if you will, and thereby prove their salvation. And you'll see that as we go as we go forward. So that's the setting. That's, that's what's going on in this book and in chapter 1, he begins by demonstrating that Jesus is greater than angels because in the Jewish tradition, angels are revered as special beings created by God. And he's making the point that, yes, they are special agents of God, creations of God, but Jesus is greater than even the angels. So that's chapter 1. The verse that spoke to my heart, okay, um, is verse 9, where, where he says, You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness, talking about Jesus, quoting the Old Testament. Therefore, God, your God has... Now, here's the part that really grabbed me. Has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. Has anointed you with the oil of gladness. That image uh, just stood out to me because I could picture... In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, people anointing people with all of it. Here he says, you're anointed with the oil of gladness, of gladness. And so I thought about that, prayed about that, and did some research on that and some, some reading because it really, the image of, of being anointed with gladness spoke to my heart. And in the Bible, there's a connection between an association, if you will, between being anointed or filled with the Holy Spirit and having both power and joy or gladness. We know that when you're filled with the Spirit, anointed with the Spirit, there's spiritual power. But in the Bible, it's equally true that when we are anointed with the Holy Spirit, anointed with or, or filled with the Holy Spirit, we also are full of gladness and joy. And uh, um, for instance, in Isaiah the Old Testament prophet, chapter 61, verses 1 and 3, notice this. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. You remember that in the Gospels when Jesus began his ministry saying, here's why I'm here. God's anointed me to, to bring the good news, the gospel to the poor and so on. But what I want you to see in verse 1 is that the anointing is 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 the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is on me and has anointed me. And then down in verse 3, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness. So back in Hebrews, remember, anointed with the oil of gladness here in verse 3, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So there's this connection between the fullness of the Spirit and joy. Gladness. It's like oil is poured on us, the Holy Spirit is poured on us, and with that comes not only power, but gladness and joy. Also in the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 45, which um, is what uh, the author of Hebrews quoted 
uh, verse 7 exactly, quoted it from the Septuagint, which was the, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. So the author of Hebrews quoted Psalm 45, verse 7, from the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. The Septuagint was, uh, was common in the New Testament era. So in verse 7, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. You remember that from, from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your fellows. So, again, it's talking about uh, gladness. And you see the same thing uh, different times in the book of Acts. Don't have time this morning to read all of those passages. But here's the takeaway. Joy and gladness in a Christian's life, in the life of a believer comes when we are walking in such intimate fellowship with the Heavenly Father that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. When He fills us, He gives us spiritual power. When He fills us, He gives us gladness. Now think about the opposite. When you're not walking in fellowship with Jesus, when you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, when you are actually disobeying God and sinning, there is you lose out on gladness and joy. Sin brings mourning. Sin brings sorrow. Sin brings sadness. But obedience and walking in the fullness of Christ, with your, with your focus on Him, filled with the Spirit, that's when you're happy. Um, as, as many of you know, I record these devotions uh, in advance. And actually, I read this chapter a few days ago and wrote in my journal on what and, and I think the reason that phrase in Hebrews 1, verse 9, about being anointed with the oil of gladness stood out to me is because the day before I read that chapter, that day, that whole day, I was in a funk. You ever had a day like that? I mean, the whole day, you're just in a funk. You're not happy. You don't like nothing. You're just in a funk. I was in a funk all day. I was miserable. And the following day, I read this chapter. And that phrase just slapped me in the face. And I got to say, the rest of that day was a whole lot better because I got, you know, when you're in a funk, you just keep thinking negative thoughts and you focus on yourself. But when you focus on Jesus, you focus on Jesus, you focus on Jesus. It's amazing what that does for your heart and for your spirit and for your joy. And I'm just thankful God reminded me of that. And I wanted to share it with you and remind you, keep your heart on Jesus. You focus on Jesus. Stop looking in the mirror so much and look up to heaven more. Okay, get out of your head and get in the word and you'll be so much happier. Hey, God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.